What's up YouTube? I'm the nice one and today we are making a ghostly dark evil priest kind of character uh, person in Maya. Um, yeah, so instead of me rambling, why don't we just jump straight into it, okay? Cool. Starting with the base model that we had made in a previous video, I'll leave the link in the description so that you can follow along, or the CG Trader model that you can just download for free so you can get a head start. Starting with the base model, let's make a plane, reduce the subdivisions to one, and drop a edge loop straight down the middle. Next, bring the plane up to the head and basically start molding it around the top of the head, like around the eyes, so that it makes a bit of a visor. So you see how I brought down that bottom faces in to where the nose is so that it looks like it kind of sharp drops out, kind of like an Iron Man helmet, um, kind of like it would drop down that way. And then I extrude down the bottom edges to make a sort of like a mouth guard kind of jaw protector, kind of jaw guard piece, uh, and basically kind of extrude it out around this our base model's head so that it looks like it fits more appropriately like a helmet. And it gives it kind of like a menacing vibe, having those sharp edges there. Next, I'm going to extrude out that those eye guards again, again, the eye visor a little bit to make it look like it connects at the temple. But at this point, I thought I was going to make it look like it drops down like an Iron Man helmet. But instead, I decided to just connect it to the to the uh, mouth guard using the target weld feature in your modeling toolkit. And now I'm just going to kind of tweak the uh, the helmet a little bit just so that it looks like it's how I was envisioning at least, uh, make it look a little more appropriate. Um, and basically extrude out a little bit more to make it look like it wraps around the temple of your head um, more fully as opposed to stopping at the, at the, at the exact temples. Uh, I'm going to scale it up uh, so that it fits the helmet, fits the head a bit more, maybe bring that in a bit. Um, and yeah, so basically I'm just trying to get the rough shape of the helmet that I like before extruding it out, giving it some thickness and making it look more substantial. Now I'm flattening the edges up there and I'm basically gonna start closing off this top, well not necessarily closing off this top piece, but basically making a connection point for what will be a plume later on in the future. So that's that's what these edges, uh, uh, these planes I'm making are gonna be. I know it kind of looks like a Batman, sort of looks like, at this point he kind of looks like a Batman, like a, kind of like the, uh, the the knight who laughs or the one who laughs batman who laughs if you guys watch that comic book series he kind of looks like that a little bit um i didn't mean to do that but yeah you can kind of see it anyway uh once i have the plume connection area what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start by first actually what i'm gonna first off do is make a skull cap to kind of close off the helmet so that it doesn't look like it's just a mask. I took a flat plane, reduced the subdivisions to one, and then brought it above the head and then wrapped it around uh, a little more, wrapped it around the top of the head so that it looks like it's more of a skull cap kind of piece. And then I'm just adjusting the edges, making sure that my mirror modifier is on so that uh, both sides are done symmetrically. And then once I was happy with the skull cap piece there, I extruded out the uh, the visor mask so that it looks like it's made out of metal, as well as the skull cap. Because again, like what I like to do with previous models, I like to make metal pieces have a thickness, and then cloth have just a plane, so that it it just kind of feels like the metal is clearly different fabric from the clothing. And then here, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna bevel the edges so that they're sharper. Uh, once I smooth preview because beveling the edges with a factor of about 0 0.5 and a segment of 2 makes the makes the model sharper when you smooth preview it. So it looks like it has a very sharp edge as if it's forged in some kind of uh, like a blacksmith or like a, if you're ever doing hard surface modeling for whatever reason beveling is one of your one of your best friends. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm beveling uh, edges where I want sharpness to be to make it look like it's made out of a more like a sturdier material. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go around and maybe tweak a little bit of the helmet until it's at a point that I like. Uh, again, when you guys are doing this, feel free to kind of modify the this kind of don't don't feel, feel don't feel like you have to follow this exactly how I did it. Again, I'm kind of just uh, fiddling around and trying to get to a, a place that I like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude, I'm going to start making additional faces, three additional faces, or technically six, 
um, six additional faces because what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude these faces in so that they m look like they create well, it's like a eye slits um, in a helmet like if you ever look at a medieval helmet some of them have eye slits uh, where you can kind of see through uh, and that's what I'm going to do here so that's why I'm adding a few more edge loops and then beveling the edge loops so that I can uh, select uh, specific faces between two close by edges and then extrude them in so that they make a like what I said an edge like a eye slit for this uh, mask I remember at this point I was having a lot of trouble with a particular edge I think that's because the edge wasn't necessarily connected when I created the edge loop or it wasn't perfectly symmetrical so I had to manually edge slide and adjust how um, how that ended up looking in order to do it properly so when you guys are doing it, just be a little careful where, where you drop an edge loop, edge slide edge. Um, just because it, it is a bit of a pain to try and fix manually later on. Uh, and yeah, okay, cool. So again, um, instead of beveling, I'm just kind of manually adding edge loops. And there you go. Like what I talked about earlier, I'm extruding uh, the, the faces in so that they uh, look like they make uh, eye slits. And then I'm just gonna add a few more, uh, um, just a few more edge loops so it doesn't look like the eye slits go all the way top, all the way to the top of the mask. So that wouldn't really make sense. They have to look like they're kind of cut into the visor a little more accurately. And uh, yeah, there we go. So I think that looks pretty good. I probably add one more straight down the center here, uh, rule of threes, you know. Um, you probably could add more if you really want to, to be honest with you. But I liked how three looked. Um, and uh, yeah. So again, I'm using, again, if you can do this without having, if you can uh, bevel it without um, having to add the edge loops manually yourself, I would highly recommend that. Me personally, with this particular model, I messed up somewhere where it was like the edges weren't connected properly. So beveling kind of messed everything up. So that's why I had to add bevel edges or uh, bevel edge loops uh, manually. Okay, cool. And then now I'm just adding a few more uh, edge loops to sharpen off this visor a little more. Um, I remember I was having a lot of a really hard time with this particular mask for, for whatever reason. I think it's because somewhere in the beginning I messed up, like maybe I, my symmetry was wrong. But once I got to a place that I liked, I started making the plume. So if any of you have actually watched the Spartan video I made before, it's a very similar process, or at least a very similar kind of steps. Um, before I make the plume, I'm going to extend the plume connectors a little bit and make it prepare the plume connectors so that they look so that they're ready to kind of attach to the actual plume once I model that. So that's what you see me doing here, just extruding out those top Batman ears, I guess and then uh, just getting it ready. So now what I'm doing is just kind of extruding out the side faces and then just slightly uh, bringing them down so that they kind of make a curved shape. You could probably do this in a lot of different ways. Like for example, you could do a cylinder, cut out the bottom half of the cylinder and then connect it that way. Whatever you think is appropriate. I decided to kind of just do the um, mirror extrusion uh, technique uh, to arrive here, but whatever you find a bit, whatever works best for you, go for it. And then once I have the plume there, I think I add a few more details, like for example, like a spike uh, straight up the top, just to make them look a little more menacing. Again, that's pretty easy. Just extrude out those faces and then sh uh, scale in the top of the face and then rotate it along the front facing axis so that it looks sharper. Uh, and then I do the same thing here uh, with the side, with the, the peripheral um, spikes. It kind of ends up making like a weird crown in, or like a halo in a way, so I ended up liking that a little bit. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a flat plane. Again, reduce the subdivisions to one, drop an edge loop straight down the middle, and two more to the side to get ready to start modeling. And basically, this is gonna be like robes um, that basically protrude, not protrude, but come out of the helmet uh, and down around the shoulder. They're kind of like uh, tabards or like banners in a weird way. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm doing here. So I'm going to extrude out this flat plane, wrap it around the helmet that I have here, uh, and then just kind of tweak some of the edges so that they look like they're more, a little more 
they look like they're coming out of the somehow attached to the helmet and coming out of that. Uh, and I believe I smooth I smooth that out later on. Um, but if you guys are working in um, low poly uh, approach, uh, feel free to kind of keep it a flat plane like that. You don't necessarily have to smooth everything out. I do and anim mostly animation stuff, and I like to have that smooth feature. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is what I'm doing here now. Uh, I'm extending the headscarf, um, like tabard kind of banner piece down around the shoulder. And then I believe I'm going to extrude it straight down the front to make the tabard, the actual tabard piece. And then I think I'm end up extruding it down the back as well so that it looks uh, kind of like it, kind of like it like uh, goes around the shoulder a bit more appropriately. And there you go. So we got kind of like a hanging scarf kind of thing. Uh, extrude that down to give them a bit of a cape. And uh, yeah, so we're off to a good start. Um, at this point, I think what I'm going to do next is start making the rest of his robes. So unlike my previous models, which are very armor heavy, this guy's a lot more about cloth and fabric. And so I decided to give him... So he's going to get like a really deep V here, <laughs> like a nice deep V uh, that you might see at a rave club or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to extrude that up, make a flat plane, uh, drop a couple of edge loops down the center and to the left and right of the center so that it's symmetrical, and then rotate the edge loops at the top in such a way that it makes a, like a, makes a V. Um, using the mirror, if you have the mirror modifier, this will make it a lot easier. So just make sure you're mirroring both edge, you're selecting both edges at the same time. And then that way you can make the V that's perfectly symmetrical. And then again, I kind of wrap the, the the shoulder straps around the shoulder and then extrude straight down the back and then use the bridge tool to connect it, connect it to make this apron type of thing. Uh, I'm going to transform it uh, with scale and a couple other things just to make it look like it fits a bit more accurately. And then drop a couple edge loops right around the armpits so that I can select the edge loops just below and bridge those two just to close off our apron and make it an actual kind of shirt. And now what you see me doing is just tweaking the shirt a little bit more or the vest so that it uh, fits our character a bit more, making his V a little bit deeper. You know, uh, you can never go wrong with too deep a V. And then uh, I believe I ex I'm extruding this straight down to make a robe, kind of like a nightgown type of thing. I did leave the legs there because I knew I wasn't going to need. Um, those are basically going to be covered by this um, this kind of nightgown robe thing. Uh, so I didn't need the legs there to add polys that weren't necessary. Um, so feel free to kind of find efficiencies that way by deleting faces that you aren't exactly using. Me personally, I like to make things as actual clothing so I can mi mix and match here and there in the future. Um, but do whatever works for you. Um, so yeah, okay, there we go. So now we have a first, now we have our initial kind of robe. And I uh, believe what I'm going to do here now is make sleeves. So start with a plane, reduce the, reduce the subdivisions to one, bring it to the shoulder, uh, and now switch the uh, symmetry to Y. Uh, what I did there a little bit was fix the shoulder robes a bit so they fit a bit more. Um, but yeah, okay, back to the sleeves. Um, add a few edge loops straight down the middle and then to the sides so that you make four faces. And basically what I'm going to start doing is modeling this plane in a way that kind of... Uh, makes it look like it's kind of hanging on top or like just kind of draping over this character's arms. So I'm going to extrude down here, straight down the uh, the arm a little bit just so that I can get the initial shape uh, and then fit it to the wrist and then extrude straight down so that it looks like it's these tattered robes just kind of uh, floating there uh, ominously. Kind of like a, if you ever watch um, kind of any really typical like um, ghost character, you'll see a lot of stuff like these ragged robes that are kind of ghostly in a way, and, a, and a, I wanted it to be menacing, so that's kind of what's happening right now. So again, extruding only if not all the faces, specific faces to give it that ripped, ro ripped cloth kind of vibe, um, and then just kind of sharpening off the edges by scaling it straight down, straight scaling those edges down, and then just kind of making them kind of pointed. Now I have it in smooth preview, so it looks a lot more cleaner as opposed to low poly. Uh, again, if you're working in low poly, feel free to not use that feature. Uh, I apply thickness to this um, this uh, 
tavern because I want to give it a bit of a different um, weight to it as opposed to the other fabrics just to give it some variety. So it does, it's not just a bunch of planes, kind of a uh, bunch of uh, flat planes kind of working together. And then here, what I'm going to do is uh, I started layering the the initial robe we had made, the initial nightgown. I was going to layer it a little bit uh, just to give it, again, I imagine these kind of like ghostly characters having lots and lots of layers and lots of lots of uh, just robes and stuff like that and that are like ragged and broken and f creepy looking. So that's why I duplicated the v-neck and just uh, kind of tweaked it without mirror modifier so I can kind of give it some asymmetry there. Um, and uh, here I'm actually modifying the base model to give it a bit more of a kind of kind of like a how do I say it? I was going for like a sickly looking character you know like sickly looking body as if it's very uh, like almost like you could see the bones beneath which is why you see me kind of highlighting the chest cavity or the chest piece the chest right there um, uh, just to give it the sense of like you can see it's it's not healthy anyway now I'm gonna add a few more kind of uh, fabrics to kind of make it look like it's a uh, kind of like a crisscross um, rope going around the uh, the character just to give it a little more detail I felt it was kind of simple um, and so that's what you see me doing here making those crisscross fabric I didn't smooth it because I didn't think it was necessary uh, for these kind of planes and it because mostly they're going to be covered by those um, initial fabric we had or the initial uh, cloth we had made for the for this character and uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So now uh, just making a few more of these, a uh, few more of these uh, straps, uh, giving it some thickness to differentiate it from the cloth uh, beneath. Um, personally, I like to get use thickness as a way of differentiating fabrics. Um, I think it helps. Like again, like I've said before, basic cloth is just a plain, and then leather is slightly thicker, and then metal is obviously very thick with um like its own bevels to make it look sharp and substantial i remember at this point what i was gonna do is um add a few more kind of decorations and ornaments to the uh to the character but first i'm gonna tweak the sleeves a little bit more uh, and get it to a place that i like maybe fix up the fix up the nightgown a bit so it looks like it's more draping and kind of floating. Um, and there, what you saw me do was use the mirror modifier. So as opposed to duplicating the duplicating the mesh and inversing the scale, I just used mesh uh, control or space mesh uh, mirror to duplicate it on the other side perfectly. So your symmetry is maintained. Here, what you see me doing is making a couple of more ornaments for the character. It's kind of like a sharp uh, spikes that are going to hang off the uh, fabric. So just took a cube, uh, scaled down the bottom faces so that it looked sharper at one edge, and then uh, sharper another to make this triangle diamond piece. And then just extrude up to make this kind of connector uh, piece a little bit. I wanted to make these uh, weighted kind of spikes uh, just so that it kind of gave it this character like a little more, make, it, make him seem a little more uh, ominous, you know. But yeah, okay, cool. So again, I use a mirror modifier there to duplicate it on the opposite side. But uh, yeah, we're pretty much there. Uh, hopefully you guys, uh, hopefully you guys, you liked the video, or hopefully uh, you found it useful and you were able to follow along and make a character similar to this. Let me know. Let me know if you like this like twenty minute character modeling format. Um, I'm trying it out to see if it works for you. Um, I'm not too sure. I wasn't sure if you guys liked the full length uh, videos because personally might be kind of hard to follow along for like an hour or so so i want to condense it and make, give you some shortcuts to seeing how you do it anyway i'm gonna stop rambling um let me know uh let me know in the comments what you think and i will talk to you later thanks for watching thanks for watching the video if you like my content don't forget to subscribe to the channel let me know down below what you want to see next or just check out some of these other great videos thanks for tuning in i'll talk to you later